Stabat Mater Dolorosa Lacrimosa. There stands a grieving mother weeping. Vidit suum dulcem natum moriendo. She saw her sweet offspring dying. This music, this poem, is the story of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Uh, Laura, Sarah, Marlisa, Caroline, Tom, Amy, and Risa, thank you for sharing this music with us, this poem with us. This is the story of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and it is the story of Trayvon Martin's mother, and it is the story of parents in Ukraine who have watched a child be killed by sinful rockets, and it is the story of a father in Texas whose governor is trying to deny trans children access to medicine. And it is the story of anyone who is paying attention to our sweet earth as it hangs in the balance. And it is the story of the family members of the almost six million people around the globe who have died from COVID. So many mothers standing, stantes matres, grieving mothers, grieving fathers, grieving friends, grieving humans. Parents who worry about the mental health of their college students, grandchildren watching as a grandparent slips into dementia, a lover grieving the death of a beloved, church friends mourning the death of a church member. For several weeks, Kaylee and I are preaching sermons to go along with the lessons of our confirmation class. And one of the things our confirmation students are talking about is how to help others. How does our Christian faith call us to help the people around us? Westmorelanders, in so many ways, are so good at caring for others, so good at helping others. When a family member dies, we send cards and we bake casseroles. When a war breaks out, we protest for peace. When bad laws harm children, we advocate for justice. When illness comes along, we recommend all the doctors we know. When pain breaks in, we work to fix it. And those things are good. Cards and casseroles and protest and advocacy and phone calls and fixing it, those things are good, vital even. This music, this beautiful poem of Mary asks for something else. O oh, mother fountain of love, make me feel the power of sorrow that I may grieve with you. The prayer is not teach me what to do. It's not, show me how to fix the problem. It's not, help me work harder to make things better. The prayer is, me sentire vim doloris, make me feel the power of sorrow. Fatu tecum lugeam, that I may grieve with you. Make me feel the power of sorrow and grief. Today begins the season of Lent with its invitation to explore more deeply what it means to live as people of faith in the world. People of faith work hard and do things and care and part of being a faithful person is about feeling the power of sorrow. Being a Christian is about grieving with Mary, grieving with communities whose children are shot in the streets, grieving with families whose children are killed in war, grieving for our planet, and grieving for all the pain. I'm grateful for the thinking of a clergy colleague, Joseph Boyd, who's a Unitarian minister in Ohio who has spoken about grief Grief happens when we lose something, he says. 
Joseph Boyd has pointed out that we live in a culture that celebrates gaining things. We accumulate, we save, we build up, we win. That is what the culture tells us is success. To grieve, to lose, to mourn is countercultural. Laura, thank you for those words before you began about needing to stop and tune the instruments. Don't we all need to stop and tune our hearts to the pain of the world? Tune our hearts to grief. Because to grieve, to affirm loss, is also how we truly affirm life. Grief connects us to life, Joseph Boyd has said. Grief connects us to being human. Grief is never singular. It's never just yours or mine. The words, Stabat Mater Dolorosa, Lacrimosa, there stands a grieving mother weeping. That is her story. Vidit suum dolcem natum moriendo. She saw her sweet offspring dying, and those words take our breath away because we all no loss. Loss, grieving, mourning, they have the power to connect us. When we are able to speak of our grief and let another person bear it with us, we are more alive together. When we are honest about our grief, especially in the context of a community of faith like Westmoreland, we have the chance to become more real. Some people criticize religion for pointing people away from reality. Not us, not at Westmoreland. We wrestle with the tough stuff, I hope. We tune our hearts to grief, I pray. War, peace, violence, racism, human rights, grief. In a community such as ours, grieving can become a path to becoming more real, more alive. In a community of faith like Westmoreland, grief becomes a pathway to Easter, to fuller existence. Grief can open us up to more love, more truth, more caring, more justice. Grief opens us up to more courage. It is our custom each Sunday during Lent to celebrate communion. This central feast of the communion experience has various meanings. Part of communion is that it is built around grief. Communion is about remembering something that has been lost. On the night before Jesus was to die, the liturgy says, this is a meal of friends preparing to grieve. By grieving, we celebrate life. The bread is broken, and we grieve life's imperfections and celebrate how those imperfections unite us. The cup is poured out for us to grieve life's losses, and we celebrate how we are sustained in the midst of loss. And so you are invited to this feast. We pause in the middle of this piece of music. We pause in the middle of this morning. We pause in the middle of life to grieve, to remember, and to commune. On the night before Jesus was to die, he shared a meal with his disciples. At that meal, he took a loaf of bread. He blessed it, and he broke it, saying, this is my body that is broken for you. And so we take this bit of wafer as a remembering symbol. We celebrate the presence of Christ with us. We take and we eat. The scriptures tell us that after the meal, Jesus took a cup he poured it out saying, this is the cup of the new covenant. This is my life that is poured out for you as often as you come together. Drink this 
in remembrance of me. And so with the taste of bread and juice on our lips and on our tongues, let us pray. Holy God, we gather at this table as so many before us have. With hearts full of pain and promise, we gather thinking of all those close by and around the world whose minds are full of loss and life. We give thanks for bread that is broken and filling, for cup that is both spilled out and able to quench our thirst. With grief and love and sadness and celebration mingled all around us and within us, we pray and sing, holy, holy are you, steadfast love. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is the one who comes to be with us on our way. Blessed is the life we share. Blessed is the grieving that is ours to know. Blessed is the grace that comes to us in bread, in cup, in song, in life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.